Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's talk about oxymercuration, demercuration. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. So let's take a look at another kind of addition reaction we can do. Uh, this one is actually very similar to dihalogenation or even more so the halohydrin formation. And what we're going to do is this. So we have this compound. Uh, the tip off is we've got mercury in there. So oxymercuration, demercuration. We're re referring to mercury. So this compound is mercury with two uh, uh, acetate groups on there. AC, if you don't know what AC is, that's this acetyl group here. So it's just this carbonyl and a methyl group. So OAC, uh, there's two acetate groups on that mercury atom. Uh, this is the solvent system we're going to run this in, and it's two steps. So uh, the first step involves the, and we're going to look at the mechanism in a second here, but this is the first step, and then the second step is a reduction. And what these conditions do, if you're going to make like a flashcard to sort of memorize what, these, uh, what this does, if you just see the reagent conditions, uh, it's going to do a Markovnikov hydration. So we remember uh, Markovnikov hydration, we looked at acid catalyzed Markovnikov hydration. So by a different mechanism, we would do something similar. Uh, and so it's Markovnikov hydration. Remember, hydration means that we are putting an H and an OH on there, an H on one carbon and an OH on another. H plus OH is water. And it happens with Markovnikov regiospecificity. And so uh, the, o, that means that the OH is going to end up on the more substituted carbon of the ones that were in the double bond. So we've got these two carbons in the double bond. This one is more substituted because of that methyl group. So that's where the OH ends up. So if we just see these reagent conditions, we know we're doing oxymercuration, demercuration, and we know that that is a Markovnikov hydration. So we're going to put the OH on the more substituted carbon. So that's just a general overview of what this uh, reaction does. So now let's look at the mechanism. And this is where we're going to see that it's actually very similar, like we said, to dihalogenation uh, or even more so uh, halohydrin formation. And so we've got this uh, situation here. We have this alkene. Remember, we're looking at this edge on like this. And uh, we, by now we know that pi bonds can behave nucleophilically. That's nothing new. So that can go ahead and interact with this electron deficient uh, mercury atom. And let's kick off one of those acetate groups. And so that is going to give us this mercurinium ion intermediate. And so this may look familiar. If you imagine this is just a, a bromine atom, we would have our bromonium intermediate, just like in dihalogenation or halohydrin formation. And so now this is where, uh, this is where the hydration is going to happen because now we can have water pop this open just like with halohydrin formation. So we can kick that open, right? We're going to pop open the mercurinium ion intermediate and we're going to have this situation here. So we've put water on the molecule uh, and then we can have water, another molecule of water or we can have the acetate ion that we kicked off over here. Just something in solution is going to go ahead and get that proton and neutralize that oxygen atom, and we get to here. So we've, we've popped that OH on there. And so uh, then the second step, remember back here, the second step is a reduction, and sodium borohydride is going to be the step that is going to kick this off and get us the proton there. So that's the product. We've got, we, uh, we have H and we have OH, so that's why this is a hydration. And so uh, this is going to be our product. That's the mechanism. And so just a couple of key points here. Number one, in terms of the regiochemistry, uh, that's going to all happen here. This is very similar to halohydrin formation. Let's say we had uh, this situation, right? Let's say these were, that was a methyl over there. So this would have been the more substituted. Just like with those other mechanisms we learned, this mercurinium ion intermediate, this sigma bond is going to end up uh, uh, basically coming apart a little bit more than this other one in an attempt to slightly neutralize that positive mercury atom. So that's again like a bromonium ion intermediate where one of those bonds is going to be, uh, you know, be, be able to uh, come apart a little more easily because if water can come here, this is going to be the more partially positive carbon due to that electronic effect. And so that's where the regiochemistry comes from. Uh, so that is one aspect to be aware of. Uh, another thing that we want to be aware of is that there is a variation of this called alkoxy mercuration, demercuration. And all that we need to be aware of for that is if we run this instead of in water, 
if we run this in alcohol, so we have ROH instead of H2O, that is what is going to make this alkoxy mercuration, demercuration, and that will simply give us OR instead of OH. So that would be, uh, again, it would still, uh, everything would be the same mechanistically, et cetera. It'd still be Markovnikov, but we'd have an alkoxy mercuration, demercuration, because we've done this in alcohol instead, and we would now have OR. So that is a method of ether synthesis. And so that is what we need to know uh, mechanistically and in terms of the regiochemistry involved with oxymercuration, demercuration. So just to put this together, let's take a look at an example for a substrate. So we're looking at this, and remember that if we see this, say on a test, we see a structure like this and we see these conditions, we know that we want to think oxymercuration, demercuration, and we have memorized, even if we don't want to remember the mechanism, we have it memorized that these conditions are going to yield a Markovnikov hydration. And so a Markovnikov hydration, what that means is we're going to look at the two carbons participating in the pi bond, and we're going to, uh, we're going to notice that this is the more substituted carbon uh, of the two in the pi bond, so we know that's where we're going to put the hydroxyl group. So we take a look over here, but we are going to get a product mixture because the thing is, we do have regiospecificity, but we do not have stereospecificity. So we're generating a chiral center here. When we put that hydroxyl group on there, we are going to get a racemic mixture. Uh, we're going to get both versions here, so we will have that. And so uh, this is a useful technique. Uh, because it's another way of doing a Markovnikov hydration, and it is a way of doing it without carbocation rearrangement. So if we did acid-catalyzed hydration, say in this example, we might expect to, or we would expect to get a carbocation intermediate uh, with the carbocation here. We could get a methanide shift. There could be carbocation rearrangement. If we have a situation where we do not want carbocation rearrangement, this would be a better, uh, a better technique to employ because we can see that we could get this desired product, maybe not in stereospecific fashion, but we are going to get uh, the regiochemistry and the structural isomer that we want. So that's your oxymercuration, demercuration, and alkoxymercuration, demercuration. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.